Hi you guys, Lindsay here and it is a new month. It is the second month of 2017, February, which means I have my January favorites. And this month, I don't know if it's because it's a new year and you have that sense of refreshing, renewal, and all of that, but I found a lot of really cool things this month that I really, really love. Um, so I actually have one, two, three, four, five favorites for you this month. Um, it's a lot, but like I said, I just stumbled upon these things and fell in love with them. So I just have to share them with all of you. So let's jump right in since I have so many. Um, first of all, I want to, um, give a shout out to Jen, one of our viewers. She commented on the 2016 Sewing Favorites video and introduced me to the next two favorites that I'm going to tell you about. So thanks so much for the heads up. You were right. I love them. They're awesome. And now I will pay it forward and share it with everyone else. So the first thing she told me about was the Dritz Machine Needle Organizer. So this is basically a card like this. It's plastic and on it it has um, different sections um, for different types of needles so universal denim microtex ballpoint leather embroidery metallic stretch long arm twin hem stitch quilting and top stitch and then within each category it has the different sizes of the needles and then there's like this little like the soft part of velcro basically there's a little strip there and you just slip your needles in and the and the like i don't know furry part of the velcro like holds them in um so i used to have i just kept all my needles in the little um containers that they came in and i just had them stored in my sewing toolbox that i've showed you guys before and not only did I not like that, it wasn't really organized. Every time I wanted a universal needle, I had to go through all of the little packs. Of course, the last pack I come across is the one I actually need. Um, but I discovered through this process that I was like buying duplicates of things that I already had. Um, I have so many universal size 80 and 90s that I couldn't even fit them all on here. I had to have this little well, <laughs> does this look familiar to you guys? <laughs> it's the, um, it's the tray from the brother 1034D serger. I don't know. It just looked like it fit them. So I just stuck them in there for now. I'll make something cuter. I promise. But, um, but anyways, I had so many that I had to put like all my backups in this little, um, tray here so that I could get them out, get everything out of the toolbox, um, and either onto here and then the backups into here. So that was really surprising to me because, you know, you get to Joann's and you always think, oh, I definitely need needles. Well, now I know that I'm good on several categories for quite a long time. I mean, who needs one, two, three, five leather, 110 needles. I don't know. I guess apparently I did when I was going to sew leather. Um, I have like a gazillion stretch needles. Um, so yeah, it just really helps you keep a really good inventory of what you have to because, you know, just, oh shoot, I just dropped them all. Um, Butterfingers. It's par for the course these days. Um, instead of keeping them all in these little packets and then keeping the little packets stored away somewhere, you can never know what all you have of anything. So yeah, the Dritz machine needle organizer is favorite number one. Um, that's actually the second time I've done that tonight. <laughs> Full disclosure, I just have butterfingers right now. Brain fog is another symptom that I'm going through. So just try to stay patient and uh, keep things moving along. Um, okay, so the next thing that Jen told me about is this. And it looks a little weird now because it's not put in place. But basically, it is a heat safe mat with, as you can see, one inch grid lines. It also has a bias line marked. Um, and this is a mat that sits underneath your sewing machine. And then this little part hangs off the edge of the sewing machine and it's little baskets or little pockets. So you can put your scissors in there, you can put your needles in there, and then the one over here is like a little trash bag. 
So you drop your little thread into the trash bag and then whenever you're ready to throw it all away, you just rip this thing off and then dump out your trash. You can wash this thing. Um, it's really cool. And like I said, you can, it's heat proof. So you can iron straight onto this. So if you're working with smaller pieces, i.e. if you're a quilter but also for us garment sewers like if you're just doing like a small neck band or something like that you can bring your iron over closer to your sewing machine and keep everything kind of all in one place i also really love this because i like having something under my machine um between my machine and the table that it's on i feel like the machine itself is more stable um, it's quieter, which is also a bonus. Um, and I just feel like my machine's happier sitting on a little cushion. I don't know. Um, so yeah, the official title of this thing is the Household Essentials Sewing and Ironing Accessory Pad. So of course, all, as usual, all of the links to everything I'm talking about today is going to be in the description box below. So um, if you're on a mobile device, I think it's a little teeny tiny arrow on like the bottom right. And then if you're on a desktop, um, it's a kind of a bigger button in the same area. But, um, but yeah, all the information and all the links to all the products are in the description box below. Okay, so the next item I have is actually something I should have done a long, long time ago. And I think that I never did because I just didn't know what to look for. And that is to invest in a good pair of scissors. So I settled on the brand called Kai, K-A-I. Um, there's a Japanese brand, which I really love because I don't know, I associate Japanese with like good craftsmanship and uh, things that last long. <laughs> that could be a complete stereotype. It's okay. I'm a quarter Japanese. So I guess in a way I'm allowed to say that. But um, yeah, I just associate um, Japanese manufacturers as with like good quality stuff. And um, so they make a ton of different scissors and they range in price. Um, I ended up going with a um, like a set that they sell. Um, but I actually found that I could get all the pieces of the set sold separately on Amazon for a few dollars cheaper. So I ended up doing that instead. So this is their Very Berry, which is like the pink, which I had to have. But also it's a practical reason because I wanted something that was going to stand out in my sewing box and on my sewing table. So I'm not like hunting around for black handles. You'd never see those. They would blend in, but these bright pink ones, um, they stand out and it comes with a really cool, um, cover. Um, this one is, um, scissors and it's, I want to say four and a half inch. Um, and they're called embroidery scissors, but I like them for like thread snipping. They're perfect for serger thread snipping, cutting the little, um, notches out of fabrics. They're perfect for that. And I was not a hundred percent sure as to how big of a difference it was going to be. I've had the orange handled Fiskars that you can just get at any Joann's craft store. Um, for since I started sewing and I have had two pairs of those and both of them at this point are so dull that I knew that I knew that there would be an improvement over the dull scissors. I didn't know if I would notice an improvement over like if I had just gotten a brand new pair of Fiskars and there it's like night and day. Like I almost want to go buy another pair of Fisker, Fiskars and do like a side by side comparison. I mean, cutting through fabric with these, it's like slicing through butter. Like I can't even explain it. The, the, even just like the hinge or just like opening and closing them is so much easier. Um, and when you cut through all the way to the tip, it's just like seriously like slicing through butter. It's, um, it's amazing how much of a difference a good pair of scissors makes. So I was saying I got these, which are embroidery scissors. Um, and then I got a large pair um, more for fabric cutting. Maybe this is what I get for trying to go cheap and ordering on Amazon, but actually when the Amazon envelope came, there was a hole in it and the scissors had fallen out. <laughs> so I'm waiting to get my replacement. But in the meantime, I've been using these a lot. Everything, I've been using them for everything other than cutting out the main parts of the fabric. 
but um but yeah i really really love these scissors i'm going to be exclusively a kai scissor and sheer person from here on out um i if you can't get a set if you can't get the nicest pair get any pair you can afford because i promise you you will use them a ton a ton a ton okay and then the last um favorite that i have is actually online and it is the mccall's facebook group um i'm not sure if anybody who's watching is already a member or not they have like thousands of members apparently they just launched the facebook group like early last year maybe february of last year and meg carter who does all their social media said that it was like really surprising to her to see how much the community has responded um and i love the group because there are women from all different age ranges all different skill levels and everyone's just super encouraging everyone posts like really their projects which is really cool to see because um you know when you, it's kind of like instagram when you see somebody make something and you see it in a different way and it inspires you to make it in a way um, that's really cool and it's helpful. Um, there have been people who have gone on and asked questions like I get lost on this piece, like what am I doing wrong or they're asking about fabrics, like which fabric would be good for this or you know those kinds of things. I found a typo in one of the patterns and so I went on there and reported that and got some information on you know how to um, report that to the McCall's company. Um, I don't know, there's just like anything, any questions you have about any of the McCall's family of patterns, which is McCall's, Vogue, and Butterick. Um, I think that's it, just those three. Maybe one more. Is Quick Sew a part of them? Anyways, the whole family of McCall's patterns. Any questions you have about anything, um, you can post there. And either other people from the community that don't work for McCall's at all will reply to you and you can get an answer that way. Or um, if it's a question for the company, Meg, or she has someone else um, that answers for her sometimes too, uh, will get you an answer that way. So it's just really cool if you're new to sewing, um, if you're new to pattern sewing, um, I just highly recommend joining just as a beginner but if you've been sewing for a while I think you'll find it really inspirational and fun to be a part of so I've just really enjoyed like scanning through and it makes my Facebook feed like you know a little bit more enjoyable not political not any of that other crap that we're dealing with right now um, so it's just nice to see well so there you have it those are my favorites for the month of january again like i said before all of the links are in the description box below um, if you aren't already please subscribe to our channel there's going to be a little circle with mine and abby's face right up here in the corner click that and you can subscribe and um you can follow me on social media i'm posting all of my recent makes and um, other fun things we are at inside the hem on instagram and facebook and twitter so be sure to follow us there so until next time i'll see you guys bye